the highest praise. Hallelujah. Lift up his holy name. Just wanna hear you say. We go hard in the paint on the grind for the king. Problems on my path, man, it don't change a thing. I'm Christ, you gon' lean, but you help a brother sing. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yep, Jesus be a praise to go. Cross the bar to the other side, real slow. Make sure you wait on the wheel of the Lord. Not the form, no behind. Yep, stay on the accord. Can't yeah. afford to start over. I made up in the game. Y'all can sweep this in us with a power in the sand. Come on, some change. Some of the change for my partners in the hood. I've been studying in the book of Isaiah and it's been talking about all of the precious promises and then God opened me up in the book of Jeremiah as to where he's going to send forth his prophet and he has a very very hard word uh, for some people but it's a very very sweet word unto uh, others and that's just how the gospel goes it's a blessing on the psalm and ultimately of condemnation unto others yes, sir. after it's been refused and it's been rejected in the bellows of hell for all of eternity. And my message uh, for this afternoon is that God actually sets himself against people. This is from this is from Jeremiah chapter one that he sets himself against people. And I know that that may seem strange. I'm in a world where the Lord Jesus is often preached as a Santa Claus with candy and all sweets. And he has no wrath, he has no judgment, has no holiness, he has no power. But the true God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ is a holy God. And when he sets himself against somebody, he humbles them. Yes, sir. And he brings them all the way down unto the ground. But there's another kind of person he sets himself against for all of eternity because they refuse uh, to bow to Christ. Yes, sir. And what the scripture says in Jeremiah 1 verse 15 is, And the Lord said to me, Out of the north calamity shall break forth on all the inhabitants of the land. For behold, I am calling all families of the kingdoms of the north, as the king of Babylon says, A Lord. And they shall come, and each one set his throne at the entrance of the gates of Jerusalem. That's the city of the soul. That's the city of mankind's heart. And against all its walls all around, and against all the cities of Judah. And so what our Lord Jesus Christ is, is doing right now is he's bringing chastisement and affliction that some of you have already experienced. And he is causing you to understand that your own ways of the way you want to live, of the pride of life, the flesh, of the fact that I'm going to do things my way and, and, and I'm going to make it into heaven anyway, right. that that does not work. And he comes to bring you down. That's right. And when a man comes to fight God and says, no, I won't submit, I won't obey the gospel, he is in a losing cause. Right. Because Almighty God is undefeated. Amen. And at the end of time, what the scripture says in the book of Proverbs, chapter yeah, 20, is that right. there is no wisdom. Good. How are you? There is no counsel. Yeah. There is no might. There is no understanding against our Lord Jesus Christ. There is absolutely Amen. no hope whatsoever yeah. except to fall down and bow at the knees of of this most glorious king. Yes, sir. And if you bow to him, all the affliction that you suffer, all that he puts you through as a chastisement of your sins, it will be a sweet mercy. And you'll look back upon God the Father and say, he chastened me in his love. Right. But if you do not bow, you'll wake up in hell. There's no hope. After he sends you to the judgment, and you will bow there to the Lord Jesus Christ because that's already been established right. who is king of kings and who's lord of lords yes sir and it's not by man's permission 
It's by God resurrecting him from the dead. Right. The almighty God has already said who was boss around here. Yes, sir. And at his feet is sweet rest and yeah. eternal life. Yeah. Oh, but put in rebellion. I've got to be crushed and I've got to be broken. Amen. And so the Bible talks in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 24. It's about two kinds of people. It's about two figs. And the scripture talks about the good figs yeah. that are very good. Yeah. Sweet to the taste. Amen. Those figs will go into Babylon to learn to humble themselves. Amen. They will learn to confess their sin. They will learn to trust Christ for all righteousness and obedience. Yes, sir. And they will look to God after they have learned their lesson to live God's yeah. way. Yes, sir. That's when the afflicting hand, it's like a spanking that you used to get from mom and the punishment, if it worked its purpose... It got you to act right. Yes, sir. But Almighty God knows how to get straight into the sinner's heart and to make him yield, not in pretense, but in all sincerity. Amen. And the authority to accomplish this is the Lord. Those good figs he calls his elect. Yeah. And we, his elect, have been chosen from the foundation of the world. Yes, sir. And God's not going to let us boast Nothing or else. die in our sin. That's right. And so he will, he will die himself upon the cross to make sure I'm spared. And he will send trouble and affliction by the Holy Spirit yep. to make sure that every mouth is stopped. Amen. And all become obedient and submissive unto God's glory, yes, who alone is worthy to be praised. Amen. And then there's a second kind of fig in the book of Jeremiah 24. And what the scripture calls them is naughty figs that cannot be eaten. Huh. What does he mean by that? He's saying, even though I chastised you, even though I hurt you with affliction, even though I got to your heart and I told you that I'm God, even though I pleaded with you, even though I sent you trouble and I warned you of death, yeah. even though old age came upon you and affliction and cancer and trials, you still would not cry out unto me. Right. And our Lord Jesus said, except you repent, you all... Yep will likewise yep. perish. Amen. There are two kinds of people. I'm the one who says, ouch, Lord, please save me. Amen. And, and the other kind of person says, I will never bow. Right. And you will bow. But you're going <laughs> to bow after it is too late. Amen. The promised land is Christ Amen. himself. That's exactly right. God Hallelujah. giving you himself. <laughs> God stretched himself out for us. That's right. He emptied himself. That's right. The Bible says he who was rich became poor for our sakes. That's right. He who was everything was treated like nothing so that we who are nothing could be treated like we somebody. That's right. <laughs> we are now princes and kings as we stand in the liberty of Christ the King. We as sons and daughters now are heirs to the throne. We are heirs to everything that Christ has because he accomplished all of his work, not for himself. That's right. But he did all of that work for you and I that we might become citizens of that kingdom. We who are vagabonds, kicked out, <laughs> might have access to enter back in. That's the good news we come to proclaim today. Wherever you listen to that, this is the good news of the gospel that God looks at you right where you are. It says, because of Christ, come to me. Don't stop nothing. Don't fix nothing. Come right as you are. You can come. And that is a journey of the heart. That if God, by his grace, by his spirit, by his word, would call you today, your life would never be the same. But it is the death process that begins that work, my brothers and sisters.